Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and hopefully we're going to preface this video with a little question. How often do you reset your router? If it's, uh, I haven't reset my router at all, today's going to be kind of a little uh, interesting problem for you. Maybe. Let's hope not. But if the answer is Mudahar, almost every single hour on the hour, on the dot, I reset my router. At that point, I would say that you're probably somewhat safe. Well, see, today's malware that we're talking about is simply known as VPN filter, a simply nasty piece of Russian malware that was actually showcased to us just last month. Now, the Russians have said, the government itself has said there is no involvement, and trust me, let me give you a history lesson. Every time the Russians get caught with this kind of stuff, the government says we have no... No, no responsibility on it, not even a part of it, so take everything you heard with a grain of salt. But regardless, whether if this is a third-party entity or the government, I don't know, it's still a nasty piece of malware. So, what does VPN filter do? Well, VPN filter actually goes right down to your router and decides to compromise the router itself to do some sneaky things that you probably won't be able to notice. See, it's a situation that no matter how good your antivirus is, you probably won't be safe because it doesn't matter how good your antivirus or your system's firewall will really be. This attacks your router. So if your router gets compromised, <laughs> it really doesn't matter how secure you are on your PC itself. And we'll get to everything in a second or so. So the list of attacks basically carried out with this virus and the actual routers that it attacks is a list that is very, very large. In fact, most companies are affected. This could include Asus routers, D-Link routers, Linksys routers, uh, Microtik, and Netgear, QNAP, uh, Ubiquity, TP-Link, whatever you want to call it. If that, if, th if that sounds a little iffy to you, you know, I didn't know there were that many routers. Well, you underestimate how big of a market routers really are. For those of you who know anything, the router market can go all the way from the lowest end to the very highest end and routers. Believe it or not, there is a very high-end router market. And that's just due to the fact that networking and routers have become their own line of stuff. Seriously, if you look at the aspect of networking, it's like its own field of computer engineering and computer sciences in of itself. There are people who strictly do networking, and they are just really damn good at creating networking protocols and managing to network a bunch of systems together efficiently and quickly. So when it comes down to router systems, it, it, it's no shock that there's many high-level ones, there are many low-level ones. For me, I have a couple high-end routers just simply to transfer a lot of files or stream video video games, uh, you know, st stream video games to an NVIDIA Shield, for example, or stream video, movies, photos, whatever you want to call it, or just transfer big batches of files in between my places without using flash drives or Ethernet cables. So regardless, routers can come in many ways, shapes, and sizes. And what's really damn impressive is routers have pretty much their own operating systems built into this point. There's so much that you can do with routers nowadays that you can't do with routers of the old, or modems if you will. Nowadays routers can handle very, very high level DHCP reserves, it can handle tons of MAC address filtering, multiple wireless access points uh, of various different frequencies, and UPnP, all this kind of stuff right down easily accessible with your web browser and whatnot. If you ever set up a router, you know that you go to your web browser, you type in 192.168.0.1, and you log into your router, and you do what you need to do. And really at this point, what this virus essentially does is when you connect to a certain web page that these people will link you to, it'll compromise your router with a set of packets that will simply attack the routers that they have listed in their own spec sheet to really target an attack. Not every single router is affected, but there are a lot. And chances are, with the model numbers that they've listed, most people will probably end up having the routers that are affected. Now, provided you've went to the site and accessed it, it's gonna be a bad time for you <laughs> because your router is now compromised. And the reason why you can't really test these kind of things uh, without being totally unsafe is that we couldn't set up a virtual machine. We couldn't really set up a lot of things because this is done down to an actual router level. We could set up theoretically a, I guess, fake router to really examine things and see how it communicates network-wise, what has changed. But at the end of the day, when you're dealing with this kind of a virus, it really affects the bare metal hardware that you're using to obviously communicate with through to the internet. So running this on a VM, is not really a possibility. You have to actually be infected for you to start analyzing what the hell you're really dealing with. Now, this virus came in three phases. Phase one would typically be a phase where you would be infected, and the infection was a latent infection. Now, what I mean by that is that basically it's a virus that can't do much, and it's just waiting to hear a signal. 
A signal from who, you ask? Well, a command and a, a command server, basically. A master server, if you will. See, at the end of the day, what we have here is a typical botnet, and a botnet is working in a way where there is one master computer and a bunch of slaves. Your router would be infected as a slave, constantly awaiting communication from its master. As soon as the master says something, if the master computer says jump, the router will jump. If the master computer says ping whatever site, the slaves will ping. Whatever the master says, the slave will follow. Simple explanation. Phase two and three are interchangeable. This is where some of the really heavy attacks go, which we'll cover into. Uh, phase three specifically, I want to say, is a self-destruct sequence where it basically wipes any traces of the VPN via VPN filter malware and renders the actual router itself useless. It bricks the router pretty much by getting rid of all necessary files needed for boot. So. And now that we've uh, covered all that situations, ladies and gentlemen, now that we've covered it all, I, I hope I'm not overwhelming anybody by this situation. I, I sort of nerd out when I come and do these videos, but that is the nature of these kind of videos anyways. What is now important is how dangerous this virus can be and how screwed over you could be theoretically uh, when given this kind of a virus to deal around with. Anyways, let's cover it. Let's cover what will go wrong. Now this virus does what I like to call and what everyone calls a MITM attack, which is man in the middle. I've mentioned this on deep web videos before, MITM, MITM, man in the middle, whatever you want to call it. Basically it is a malware or it is an attack that has a man in the middle between you and the target that you are communicating to via the internet, be it a website or a web program, web applet, whatever you want to call it, and basically can scan what you're doing between you and that program and also change, interfere, and basically screw it up for both parties involved. If that sounds a little weird, let me give you a real life example. Well, let's say you're signing into a banking application, right? You know where your money is stored. Well, let's assume that this is a virus that understands how certain banking sites work and is able to manipulate the information given to you. So basically, let's assume you sign on to a bank account. On your bank account website, once you've signed on, chances are you'll probably, you'll probably see your account balance. Well, if it's a pretty high-level MITM attack, your bank account balance can be changed to anything this virus can feel like. So let's assume you have $1,000 in your account, and every time you sign in, the virus may siphon 10 bucks from your account, $5, $4, whatever. It might even show you the $4 that are siphoned. You might not even notice it. Or it could siphon $4 out of the 1000 and still show you 1000 meaning that you probably have no idea you're doing anything. The transaction small enough that the bank won't pick it up, and the money is siphoned. Imagine $4 times 500,000 computers. You're starting, to, you're starting to feel what I'm going around with? That's the high-end estimate. Imagine that much money being transferred from bank account to bank account secretly without most people noticing. And because the virus is so filled with its stealth elements, imagine that happening over time, multiple times, without any party really knowing. See, this happened last month. Who knows how much money, information, data, crucial information this kind of a virus must have siphoned. And for it to be smart enough to get rid of its tracks and stay latent as good as it has, you never know what it could have done and exactly how active it is. Now, I normally wouldn't cover a virus like this if it didn't have its own quirks, which this one clearly does. It is malicious. It is fucked up with the amount of stuff that it, it's actually fascinating for me, at least from a code perspective, I really want to look into the nitty gritty of this kind of malware and see exactly how it functions, what it does. And just, it's all, it's almost like I want to give a pat on the back to whoever made this as malicious as it is. It's so malicious though, that the FBI actually had to launch a high level investigation. It does it's a high profile role in finding out what this really was. It's, you got to do a lot more when you're risking the, the the full force of the Federal Bureau of Investigation Cyber Divisions team. But regardless, what happened over here is a domain address called toknowall.com was the one that was essentially redirecting queries, it was the one that was basically at the epicenter of this kind of an attack. So for a lot of people, when they looked into the logs of the router, this domain address and domain addresses connected were the ones being communicated to. 
Now at this point, this domain address was the one that was basically the command center of the phase phase one step that I talked about earlier. It was the master computer side of the situation, the master situation, if you will. Federal Bureau of Investigation effectively shut that thing down, and they came out with a warning to all people that were potentially affected or affected in general. They gave a general warning to just say, restart your router. Restarting your router essentially flushes out whatever issues were happening with the router and effectively resets the exact uh, attack vector down to phase one. So it would just constantly be pinging for information. But you would still have the virus, it just couldn't do anything, you know, if there was no command center, if there was no command server active. However, the fear is if another command server kicks off, you'd be infected again. Anyways, how are you going to fix a situation like this, right? Are you fucked? Are you screwed? Do I have to get a new router? No, no, no. Let Papa Muda help you figure out exactly what you got to do in this situation. See, most modern day routers come with flashable firmwares. You remember, you, you actually have to update your routers nowadays, right? What a, what a fancy world we live in. Routers are getting software, firmware updates even. And that's actually a good thing. These updates come with security patches, and most importantly, these firmwares are essentially OS installs for this entire software, for the entire routers anyways. So, let's assume that are your router's infected, and you've reset the router and you're at stage one, but you're fearing when, to, when, the, when the router gets picked up again, you're going to be infected and your stuff's going to be compromised. At this point, you let's assume you have an ASUS router. Go to ASUS's website, download that router model, the router model's firmware files, and simply reflash your router. You can log into the router via the web page, like I told you earlier, and be able to change this stuff at any moment in time. Reflashing a router is no issue at all. In fact, believe it or not, earlier in the uh, turn of the century, modding a virus, hacking a router, sorry, not modding a virus, hacking a router, modifying a router, was actually a selling point for some of this stuff. I think Linksys did it at one point. But regardless... All you got to do is reflash your router down to its factory firmware initially and never touch the affected domain addresses at all that would give you such a virus to begin with. At that point, you're pretty much safe, all right? Just don't be browsing websites you probably shouldn't. And to most people's defense, something like this is something that most people would miss out on. You know, this is, this is one of those malwares that's just so fresh, so recent, you're literally sitting in a moment where this is being combated against. And for people to fall prey to this is not a shock at all. Even, even the most experienced individual can fall prey to this kind of stuff at any moment in time. But what's best to know is how to be preventative and how to take care of your stuff as time will go on. So ladies and gentlemen, this is just a look into the Russians VPN filter malware virus that was out there. I know that I got a little techie to begin with, and uh, it, uh, trust me, if, if you want the series the way it is, I'm going to be a super nerd all the time. So let me know in the comments below how much of a nerd do you want me to be, and hell, if you enjoy my nerdiness in general. But ladies and gentlemen, this has been a look into the VPN filter virus straight out of the Russian Federation. Whether the government's involved or the government isn't, that is one thing that we'll have to find out eventually. But for now, reset your routers, reflash your routers if you're infected or if you just want to be safe. Put those internet condoms on and be very careful about what you do on the internet. But amongst that, don't, don't be super fearful. Enjoy the internet, browse the memes, download the weird stuff, and that being said, this is me, Mudahar. If you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Just like if you dislike it, I am out.